gather closets. You're filling our cave. There's a woman in your bed. I must say, man, so shocked these days. Everyone says that the apartments of our cave will obey no legendary in the debauchery. Never that one watch a flexible affair with the old and broken that painter you scooped out of the sewers. I found myself much more at ease with your eccentricities. But really, Marquis, what an awful absurd thing about this. Yeah, that's a devil, aren't you? A devil through and through. A woman, of all the things I expect to find in your bed, a flesh and blood woman was last on the list. Now, you know I wouldn't dream of interfering with any of your proclivities. I was in full support of this sexist Vatican image you built for yourself. But if you're going to star yourself as a eunuch, at least commit to the character. If your servant tried to clean your bed, it would spoil the whole image. All that work for nothing. Plus, how would that make me look? I doubt people more to practically have a stroke when she got a hold of that morsel of gossip. Lady Chantry, what did you sneak in? It's Lady Chantry. You know, like that creamy slobber in those crepes you can handle. Whatever. Oh, did you hear that? All the drawings just now. Oh, my word. I must have, like I've heard the most annoying sound in my life. Don't change the subject. There's a woman in your bed. A woman? There's not a woman in my bed. Well, pardon me, but I'm not looking under the bedclothes to double check. <laughs> no, no. There is a woman in my bed. But, but I don't view her as one. Then what do you view her as? A goat? A cause! Eh? It's the latest fashion in the French court. Besides, it's all the They call it philanthropy. Philanthropy? It's not some wretched art movement, is it? Our contraire! Fly with the spirit of charity! Helping others! Giving back! Doing good works! Lady Shanti, and you have to remember the 
by hauling home a painted hollow in the streets over some insane charge of that dish. Brigitte, my little life is at a place to the party. I swear, Mr. Le Marquis, I would kill you myself if you liked me. But I was up a mind then. Tell me, how do you plan to off this talk? Hmm? <laughs> Camel to the head, knife to the belly. Force him to listen to that catalog we call singing. <laughs> Most uncivilized. In the heart deep. Spit on your carriage as well, your ladyship. Such rustic bravado! Who can imagine this coarse woman with such a treasure? Oh, and every rose has its thorns. Yes, and every pansy <laughs> has its manure bag. <laughs> such unfettered mannerisms. By the way, I'm not sure why you insist upon hiding fruit under that mattress of that hideous contraption you call a bed. But the story goes that a key awakens the princess, not some bloody great orange. Okay. I thought you kept the oranges in the dressing table. But then where did I keep my rope? As fascinating as this all is, I really must get back to pawning my trade. I have a special going on. Half off if we finish in under half an hour. Though fortunately, I don't have to worry about moving very much money to those impotent noblemen. Oh, vile! Yes, it can be. But I usually just hum a few bars in a firm shop to keep me distracted. You can't seriously want to pig nice this woman! Shall be my greatest challenge! Pinnacle of artistic achievement! For heaven's sake, she's a woman that a doll you can play dress up with! That costs extra. <laughs>
this sack of meringue in a wig. <coughs> Shall I be held in your writing talkers, insolent madame? Straight to Marianne, please. Dear Marianne is so devoted to me, simply exhausting. <laughs> and funny you should mention meringue. I was having tea with the Majesty in the garden. She had these exquisite, indulgent meringues. They were green tea from farthest Asia and sugar from the wildest Indies. Cost her Francis treasury, no doubt. I would expect nothing less of Madame the Deficit. Anyway, while we were enjoying this poor, funny, expensive nibbles, Marianne mentioned that the people of France had run out of bread because the harvest failed. People are simply starving. Well, I told her Majesty something rather clever. I said, oh, what was it that I said, Marianne? If the poor have run out of bread, then let them eat cake! Oh, 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 that's right! Oh, oh, oh. Let them eat cake! Oh, we are just in the chuckle over that! Oh, don't you like your other fight? <coughs> oh, why? Excuse me? Shall I use your fan to only asphyxiate, madame? That's certainly one way to make an impression. Bring the exertion of the walk here. It's always the same something. <laughs> oh, my, there's your <laughs> Your stays are allergic to that soup for cake, Madame La Comtesse. Oh, I know that pattern is making me feel ill. If I didn't know better, Madame, I'd say a man is hiding under your skirt. Oh, stop it, don't be shanty. Not even my late husband has been under there. Those secrets are reserved for tailors. Come with me, dear. I must go freshen up with some orange flower wash. I'm beginning to smell myself. Marianne! Your rebel heart craves. I also call the 
why you have to blackmail this countess? Your thinking is too narrow, Henri. Expand your vision. The Marquis' death will serve as the first warning shot of the revolution. The signs are that it's botched up a crust. The proletariat means to fight. Lady Shanty's kidnapping will serve as leverage against the Countess. She'll do anything to save that precious little ward of hers. Well, the Countess is the most well-connected woman in Versailles. So? So, my little blockhead! Through the Countess, we will get to the Queen. And through the Queen, we will get to the fact himself. The king! Mon Dieu, now that would be a coup! Gee, you think? <laughs> the revolution wants to make an example of the king. Death to tyranny. <clears throat> and we have been chosen as a secret <clears throat> agent to carry out this delicate mission. Robespierre is counting on us. And I will not have wasted all that flirting and flattery to that Fat-headed Marquis Mouvet just as well you in here! So don't screw this up. <clears throat> right. So what do we do next? You'll have to lie low for a bit while we do some reconnaissance. Your little sneezing fit under the Countess's skirt earlier nearly destroyed the whole operation. Not my fault a woman has an air down to her underclothes because they don't have time. The slums are in better condition than her downstairs chambers, let me tell you. Instead of killing him, why don't we just give him all it back? The ones are putting out them. That's it! The perfect hiding spot! No, 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 no. I am not sitting in that swamp again. Not until she chisels off that, that, that mole! No, Henri. Bag. The bag tub. That's where we can hide you until we're ready for our next phase. Brilliant. No one will ever find him in there. I can't think of a place in Versailles less likely to be used than a bathtub. Of course, you may have to scrub out a few cobwebs before you get in. Are you sure that will work? The only time of out of touch of air hands comes to a bath is when it rains on their carriage. You'll be fine. Now!
Madame du Pomont, I'll have you know, I had a woman in my bed just last night. Really? Most intriguing. Could it have been Lady Cream Pie over here? Her maid has to dust the sooner legs every morning to get the cobwebs out. <laughs> you have a mind like a sewer, Madame. I thought you had chosen to take a small respite from Versailles. What does it in the country of Mother Bolladash? Oh, respite like hell, you could have been priming out with all the duck bags and fire. Speaking of which, I see the Countess of Wella, uh, no one in particular, is still alive and kicking. Thought she had this five years ago. Madame La Comtesse is an exquisite tell. Oh, well, then she may she live on and on and on and on until she spent every last penny of her fortune. And what brings you to my apartments, Madame du Pomont? Oh, I'll melt all the secrets dry from the western wing of the palace. I told you, I came for an invitation to your party. Little bird keeps twittering about the guest list, the fine food, the entertainment. Oh, I must have missed this affair. Then I'll be sure to sit a fool's cap just for you, madame. Come look to me, Marquis. Why would it be so rash to judge me to your ladyship? Word has it the Marquis has taken up a new interest of late. Um, sick, twisted little kink called philanthropy. Well, my resources, my, well, my resources are unsure of what this is. It does seem to involve, it, it does seem to involve the village bard. We can keep him on the side. I wonder what his majesty would think about that. My dear mother do for more. There's no reason for a couple of friends to resort to vulgar blackmail. Of course you can come to the party. I insist upon it. In fact, why don't you come to my champagne supper this evening as my special guest?
potassium cyanide. Well, that's rich on the doctor taste. A perfect recipe for an eternal rest.
Want to take bets on which one passes out first? Mountains of Northern. Gloomy grunt. At least I let you out of the back of the stretch. Marianne would have snuck you there. Marianne, I want to focus on the mission. I play parlor games. If the resolution is to come, I want to be swift and accurate, not shoddy and messy. Have you seen your targets? Shoddy and messy are the watchwords by which they live their lives. I'm not thinking of the Brigitte gives the word. Oh, Brigitte, Brigitte, Brigitte. Is she the only one allowed to have opinions? Or a plan? Or a mission? The bathtub idea was mine. Remember? I thought we were fighting for equality here. Liberty, equality, fraternity. She still is on the mission. Ooh la la, let's just crown her queen of the rebels then. Diamond and crystal and porcelain. <laughs> 
she wants. She is the type used to, used to becoming the mistress of a king. Why shouldn't she want to topple the monarchy? She is aiming to capture the heart of Louis the Sixteenth. <coughs> I know exactly the type of woman she is. Mondo, you can't be silly. Always sad when a man loses his head for a pretty face instead of the soul behind the face. Wake up, Henri. Brigitte is more royalist than revolutionary. Then why do you call the of the revolution? <coughs> why go to Robespierre? Two-faced snakes like Brigitte follow whoever gives them the best advantages. For a, a bond, a revolutionary is your best bet. But when she mutates into an aristocrat, a king is much more valuable than an ara, ara, ara blah blah out of the whole plan. She never did a weird I've been a dive and surrender myself to these tyrants. I was too afraid of the regime in my bare hands to have him betray us to these pigs. Who says we aren't trading one tyrant for another? If you mean. Louis the Sixteenth, Robespierre, Brigitte the Bard, all cut from the same cloth. Oppression follows. O oppression. One tyrant will fall, another picks up the slack. You won't have your freedom on Henri unless you snatch it for yourself. You are a man great enough to, to lead the revolution. Don't let them soften your head with ideals. Don't let them <coughs> neuter your power and make you nothing more than a brainless arm. Rise, fight, become a king in your own right. Well, I could be your queen. Queen? You are the treasure, Marianne! Brigitte would never betray us to these pigs, but you, you who have been around the aristocracy your whole life, you've come into these luxuries, haven't you? You want to be mistress of the king, the queen of your own petty empire. You're the tyrant trying to talk. No! No, 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 no. I see right through you, demonic minx. You don't want change. You want power. You're the tyrant trying to control me. You were against this whole time. Haven't you?
think one existed. So seriously, what's with all the weird ingredients? Today you begin your training into a woman of grace and refinement. Drat, I'm here talking for a woman's ill fame and resentment. Do be serious. Boy, you have got any of this poison, and you don't bat an eyelash. <coughs> Lemon. 
than others to get you the perfect bath. Really now? What is the hold up? It's almost like you don't want me in the bathroom. It's a little ridiculous why they bother me. Just sent it down to the hall of the tears. No one uses that bright as a tea anyway. Oh, take an exquisitely hideous table for the two. I know it's Marquise's, but really, the man needs a woman to tell him that his taste in furniture is simply atrocious. Merci, monsieur. You whip up a little confection for the bar tomorrow, just for me. I am so very particular with my personal desserts. They just finished carting it into the apartment. Just a simple seven-layer tear cake, dust and pearl sugar. I had to make enough to be an army. And where are the guests supposed to sit? They could just mill about and admire my cake. <laughs> I think I was a bit excessive with the frosting. But if my family and friends have to go back to the front, to afford my cake, well, at least it was for a worthy cause. A worthy cause? Why, yes, Brigitte. The history is the most noble effort in France, you know. What need we wars and revolutions? We have cake to be had. Oh, I must go wash the frostings from my hands. It took 12 servants to maneuver the cake in place. Oh, what a silly thing me and mine disappeared to. Regret at 
and Mark's death. Oh, well, how to put it It's all party, though. Death has a negative effect on people's spirits. Just don't put a corpse in the bed. The linens have been punished enough already. I wonder how she died. Arsenic. Engine. No good with cross sugar, I'm afraid. My private cake as well. To get all the frosting immediately. Such a waste of a good cake. Oh, the woman is a set of my blood cow. How am I supposed to poison her? It's tragic, really. We'll have to move the bodies before the flies get here. We'll be simply choking on flies when the guests arrive. Right now. If I kill her now, it would be spared from any further cheerful observations. Put a lid on it. Your hand man's attempt with the arsenic in the cake was a disaster. Who said I was most responsible for that? Monsieur Le Duc, wouldn't you agree? When one's life is threatened, one can truly become a gourmand of life's pleasures. Eating, drinking, breathing, but also intoxicating. I can take her out right now. Take them all out. You have restrained yourself. The little cake fiasco earlier wasn't pretty. It was supposed to keep the Countess alive. She's our ticket to Louis XVI. And where is Mary Ann? She's supposed to be helping us with this. I truly must have been <laughs> She's such a joy to spar with. Even if her face called out for a period, have you powdered to cover those unusual blemishes? Where did you stick the large body anyway? In the bathtub. No one ever uses one at the side. Perfect hiding place. Well, thank goodness no one will notice the smell. Monsieur Le Duc, you must have some wonderful stories about your native land, all the backward customs and peasant idiosyncrasies you've had to endure. We are a proud nation of good, honest people. We do not bow and scrape before these fattened noble men. Uh, we choose who leads us. How extraordinary. We do not fall on our faces before a heartless king. In my land, we as a people have the power. If he doesn't determine to don't blow it on the How do you do? So disparaging of aristocracy. Oh, don't be silly. The Duke far from the routinely spat the most vicious diatribes against the king and queen. Roll in mud and cavort to Marie Antoinette's toy town farm built at the bottom of the Versailles Garden. Last I heard, he was seen masquerading as one of Marie Antoinette's be begriffin ghosts. I always find Duke's princesses and vicars to be the most effervescently eccentric of the noble class. Don't you think so? That's so much found as an insult to the Scottish people of France. Melanie Antoinette knows nothing about the peasantry. She is truly bad under deceit. Control yourself, monsieur, before you lose your head. Those are the most outlandish statements I've ever heard! Not nearly as outlandish as that bizarre man calling potatoes the savior of France after the great harvest fell. Honestly, it's like they want us to pick food. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, monsieur Le Duc? I wouldn't know, madame. I am not a slave to my piggish impulses. <laughs> In my land, we don't let up in your scarf and lack of bread just so we can eat these fancy little sugar bottles. We don't lounge on our always stuff furniture like fat cats. We don't drain the life out of the land itself just so we can up on a new wig. In my land, we let our people live. Oh, control yourself. Remember your part. What an entrancing accent, monsieur. So it comes and goes as it pleases. I've seen you all, what you truly are. Pigs! Nothing but empty-headed swine spreading your gaze days and stooping at each other! How terrible! Look at my word. You'd be a poet. Such vigor. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen things in this whole place. Earthings. Smell things. You! Are the 
the true degenerate class of this nation. Not the honest or pure in your souls at all. Only devastation and rot. Even now, you have no clues to the danger of winding its way around your soft throats. Control yourself, only. Take the tyrants. Take you sponges and leeches. I want to paint the streets with your blood. The man's gone mad. Who stopped that to tell the I've gone mad. When Mother France decided to leave uh, the land, these debauched hands of yours, suddenly so I was the one who's mad. Oh, I haven't had this much fun in here. <laughs> I know your secrets, all your whispering and plotting, the plan you've forgotten the filth and greed. I know your secrets, monsieur. Stop him! You are not your money, monsieur! Oh, no, quite the contrary. I am wondrously sane and so, monsieur. Unlike the rest of you, back in it, imbeciles. I know the revolution is at hand! Don't you dare! I refuse to disband this freedom of France any longer! This is treason! Have you heard of your rules? Step into the deity! He's a lunatic! Everyone shut up! This is brilliant! I know you're plotting. You plan on killing all of us! You let that filthy gossip rot in the tongue like a piece of butcher meat! Human life means nothing to you! Control your tongue! <laughs> He's unexpectedly intelligent for a duke! I am no duke! I spit on the title! Oh, 
world for the time being. Dead is dead! Life is for the living! Why waste time on those who can no longer waste it themselves? <laughs> what a marvelous sense of Monsieur the Marquis. Life is for the living. That's why I keep the funeral short for my late husband. There was no need to be modest. <laughs>
our last show that we did here at Amargosa Opera House was our murder mystery masquerade opera called Exit to Prima Donna. And one of our actresses in the show was actually the lead of Exit Prima Donna. She plays Donatella Violetta, the soprano who gets kidnapped in the middle of that show. And she is going to be here to perform a little song for you that she performed while she was tied up on stage in the kidnapper's house. <laughs> so I would like you to give me a very, very big round of applause for Diamond Mask winner Heather McGay. around here. Flies are going to be as thick as mine at this point. Who 
died. Oh my, I'm a came away. How delightfully unexpected. <laughs> I thought the question is, how does he do at the Marquise's hands? His exquisite manners quite clearly masked a maniacal personality. Oh well. Hmm, he still has your effect at this party, though. I wonder how he died. <coughs> poison. Quite pungent. Six different poisons, I think. Quite thorough. Be careful where you stick your nose, Countess. We have business to take care of. Business, you say? I never had a head for business. The Marquis is dead. Dead on my own hand. Your precious little ward is dead. Revolution is in the air. And if you value your skin, you'll do exactly as I say. Goodness. I'm simply just to ask. That's nice to clean up afterwards. Don't play coy with me, Countess. You are going to take me to Marie Antoinette, and through her, we will get to the king. At this hour, she's usually a poorly coy little bathing ritual she's obsessed with. Now I'm as open minded as any philosopher. I can only tolerate the queen's desire to bathe. It would be rude to call upon her. Does insanity run in your family, huh? <laughs> are you forgetting who you are dealing with? I just killed the Marquis Mouvet, a depraved monster who no doubt he was responsible for the death of Madame de Vaud, Lady Chanty, oh, don't be fanciful, Brigitte. I killed them all. Had a great deal of fun planning the whole thing, too. Uh, you, and why you and us? Who else could have done it? I've truly outdone myself on these little murders, I think. I, I, I don't understand. Words I've heard out of my late husband's mouth all the time, do you? I suppose the idea came into my head when I killed my husband. Shy. In very good manners, but an insufferable bore. A pillow to the face suddenly made it much more interesting. <laughs> that's, when that, that's when my idea came to me, you see. I had this ambition, this cause I wanted to undertake. I always say that ambition should be the cornerstone of a long process. You want to have me this all. Well, a crude way to say it? They may joke that I'm a cockroach of court, but cockroaches survive. There is, however, a slight difficulty when you <laughs> thirst to be the last one standing. Everyone else just keeps on living. So you plan to eliminate everyone in Versailles? You and I aren't too different, Brigitte. Our goals and paths are quite similar. Well, how did you kill them? Well, the hallmark of any great crime is suppressing a regime. I tried to cut my crimes with too much blood on area. It helped. I'm immensely rich, my dear. Someone's always trying to kill me for my money. Then there's that strong whiff of revolution in the air. I can use all these situations to my advantage as a blind to confuse my murders and make <coughs> the fears attacks on me. Like the cake. Maybe. White often it looked perfectly like confection of sugar. It was effortless to disguise it amongst the sprinkles and the pearl sugar on the cake. <coughs> My original plan was to have the cake accidentally served to the guests at the party. Oh, to watch them fall one by one. Such a sweet finish. But Madame de Vermont was such a greedy woman, she just had to taste the frosting and ruin the surprise. I had to insist that the cake was meant for me to come to <coughs> You have to remain flexible during a murder. I'm horrified. And yet I admire your insane cunning. Much obliged, my dear. I thought you would have felt put out to my murder that on me fellow. You what? He was he just one of them all. You revolutionaries love to picture the aristocrats living in a golden bubble with no concept of what's going on outside those palace doors. I need to be absolutely correct. But I happen to overhear a few things from my servants that keep me in a proverbial loop. Things such as the harvest failing, the grain riots, and the new little flag he proposed for France, the red, white, and blue tricolor. So when I saw Henri in the bathtub wearing the revolutionary colors, I knew precisely who he was. I sent a discreet note to the palace god that a rebel had broken in, and he was into the gate for treason. Easiest murder I've ever committed. I hardly looked at the finger. You're heartless. But what about Lady Chanty? You could have killed her if she was your, what was she anyways? Ward, dear, my former heiress, in fact. And of course I killed her. I went out with everyone. Everyone had to go. How could you? Oh, again, simplicity at its best. I went up to her as she was wearing my necklace of all things. Charming child, but an atrocious thief. She thought I was a marquis, asked me to take her. 
and the whole neck is around her neck. He's strangled her. <laughs> I have heard the marquis say, he planned to do that to me. Really, gals, if I had fallen for that shape tree. But, but how did you do all this without anyone knowing? Very discreet, my dear. Discretion is of the utmost importance. It's not too noisy these days. I know all about Shanti and the Marquis trying to kill me for Shanti's inheritance. I, I expected it, and I used it to my advantage. Their efficiency and zeal in preparation was only my by their slipshod execution. Such a waste of good fortune, too. Unbelievable, perhaps. But I may have also killed Shanti to save myself. She's going to be dead for years. Isn't self-preservation one of the nobler motives for murder? What about Marianne? Did you do something to her? Goodness, I'm sure I don't know. She could be anywhere. At first I thought she'd run off with an unruly fellow. He seemed like the type to lose his head. <laughs> Oh, no, for the love of God. 